This is an exercise on the applications of exponential functions, part two. So it's picking up with uh, the point at the point where we left off last time, where we were looking at compound interest as being a very common type of application of exponential functions. Compound interest, you'll recall, is used for money growth or any sort of small growth where you're dealing usually in percentage type growth, growth uh, situations. Now, the next one I'm going to cover right now is the exponential growth, the, uh, you know, the classic exponential growth. And I'm going to begin with um, a scenario where we would look at uh, bacteria growth. Now, exponential growth, the way it's usually thought of, even though there's a wide variety, everything is growth unless it's decay if it's an exponential function. But the traditional classic exponential growth is where you're dealing with, say, bacteria where they double a number at a specific over a specific time interval. So in this case we have bacteria culture starting with 100 bacteria which double a number every five hours. And if we took a look at a, a chart showing this, um, at time zero, which is right now, there are 100 bacteria. And if we continue to fill in this chart, after five hours we would have 200 bacteria, double. Then after 10 total hours, we now have 400 bacteria. Five more hours, in 15 total hours, we now have 800 bacteria. And then, um, this is as far as I'm going to go anyways, um, after 20 total hours, we have 1,600 bacteria. So that's the pattern. They double every five hours. So obviously they're growing at a fairly rapid rate, which is typical for this sort of growth pattern. Now although you can muscle your way through most of these questions, or a lot of them anyways, um, there is a formula that simplifies the whole thing. This is a growth pattern with a base of two, which is typical, and also a doubling period of five hours. So you want to pay close attention to the doubling period when we insert this into a formula. And the base will be two, in the traditional ones, if you're dealing with sort of non-traditional ones, it's possible things could be tripling or some other factor, but doubling is by far and away the most common practical outcome of these. So the formula goes like this, and there's many variations of it in terms of the variables. I prefer to use n at t and n not, um, but that's just my preference. n not, n sub zero, is the initial amount. So that's what we're starting with. It's the equivalent to the principal when uh, we are dealing with the compound interest formula. And then n at t is the amount after time t. So that's the future amount. t is the time, the total time elapsed. And d is the doubling period. That is how long it takes for the material to double in number, in size, whatever. And we will, unless it says otherwise that it's not a doubling question, it will have a base of 2. And once again, we can compare it to y is equal to a times b to the x, which is our sort of standard exponential function. Um, it's right the same thing, just as compound interest is. The a, the uh, vertical stretch factor, indicates the original amount. The base, b, whatever it is, in this case 2, is right there. The exponent, x, would be t, you, or, or t over d. Depending on the specific way you graphed it, you could do either or. And then n at t is going to be the uh, y. So it's always good to keep that in mind, because in some applications you have to build your own formula, in which case you start with y equal a times b to the x instead of any given one. Because these formulas are not always provided for you. Now graphically, I'm not going to graph any specific one, but this is what we would typically get where uh, t on the x-axis and at t is the y. As I said a few minutes ago, the x-axis could be t over d, but usually they'll just go t and then keep, because the d is a constant value and um, not actually a variable in the equation. And not is going to be the original amount. So let's take a look at a few examples. If a bacteria culture begins with 2,000 bacteria, 
How many will there be after 12 hours if the culture doubles the number, number every 45 minutes? So this goes right into the formula, and you make sure you make good decisions on this. N naught, the original amount, is equal to 2,000. T is the time elapsed. So this would be 12 hours. We want to find out what it's equal to in 12 hours. Now we have to be a little bit careful because we see that the culture doubles a number every 45 minutes. So D is equal to 45 minutes. And we have to make a decision on whether we want to have this one in terms of minutes, which is OK, or hours. But T and D must be in the same units. So I'm going to convert this 45 minutes into hours by division. Most of you would probably uh, accept that uh, 45 minutes is actually 3 quarters of an hour or 0.75 hours. But make sure your units are consistent. And then we want to find the time after uh, 12 hours. So I'll write that as n at 12. And it just goes right into the formula. So n at 12, the, va the amount after 12 hours, is equal to the original amount of 2,000 times 2 to the exponent of 12 over 0.75. When you enter this into your calculator, make sure that you bracket that exponent. You want to tell your calculator, I know you know this, but you want to tell your calculator to do that 12 divided by 75 before it goes back and does all the other operations. So 2,000 times 2 to the exponent of 12 divided by 0.75, and we're going to get like a big amount. Not really that surprising when it's doubling every 45 minutes. So I'm getting 1310721. Bacteria. So it is a very rapid growth. Let's try another one. In this formula, you actually have one, two, three, four variables. So in theory, you can go after any of those variables. Oh, there is a graph here, by the way, that I'm showing. I'm not going to graph this one on my calculator because it's, it's really a high number. So it really complicates setting the window setting. But um, you could do it, of course. But you will get a graph, the, an increasing graph like that. Now the next one I'm going to look at it refers back to the, the fact that you do have four variables you could be looking for. Now, n at t is equal to n naught times 2 to the t over d. So we put into this formula everything that we have. Now be careful. It begins with 3,000. I'm just going to go directly to this point. The 2 is built right in. And after 3 hours, so when the time is 3, its amount is 48,000. And what we are going after is the D. So at this point, it's not conventional because we're looking for a variable in the d in the num in the exponent, excuse me. But this is in fact what we call a type two exponential equation, unknown in the exponent. So we divide out the three thousand. to isolate each power. And that will give us 16 is equal to 2 to the 3 over d. And with type 2 exponential equations unknown in the exponent, we get a common base. So 16 can be expressed with the base of 2. That is 2 to the 4. And that's equal to 2 to the 3 over d. So 4 
is equal to 3 over d. And I would advise you to write that as 4 over 1 so that you can see the multiplication, the cross multiplication quite easy. 4d is equal to 3. So d is equal to 3 over 4. And I will put a statement at the end of this so we can just compare and see if it seems reasonable. The doubling period is three quarters of an hour or 45 minutes if we wanted to put it in that form. In the previous question we know that three quarters of an hour is 45 minutes. We could also work that out by multiplying by 60. So be aware if the unknown is not where it's supposed to be, you might have to do something different algebraically to find it. Let's look at another one. Bacteria of a certain type double a number every hour. Okay, 100 of these are breathed into your lungs. How long before there are 3,000 bacteria to the nearest tenth? Well, don't think too hard. Start off with our regular formula, n at t is equal to n naught times 2 to the t over d. Naught, by the way, sort of old style, 0. Now, the future amount is 3,000. the initial amount is 100. The total time we do not know. That's what we want to find out. How long before there are 3,000? But we do know that they double in number every hour, so the doubling period is 1. So really be careful. Your doubling period is not the total time, it's how long it takes for the culture to double. So 3,000 is equal to 100 times 2 to the exponent of t. Now if you were to divide by 100, which you would do normally, because you're probably thinking already that this is a type 2 exponential equation, and if you're thinking that, you are right. The problem is, when you take a look at those numbers, 30 is equal to 2 to the t, there's no common base between 2 and 30. So we can't solve it the normal way. Now I can tell by looking, because 2 to the 5 is equal to 32. I know we're getting close to 5, but to nail it right on is a, is a challenge. Now later on when we get into logarithms, we learn a method for it. But you do get tested often on the the uh, other the sort of non-algebraic method, and what we have to use now is our use our calculator, and we use the graphing features in order to solve this. This, in fact, is not n a new concept. We've done this in the previous lessons as well. But what I will do is I'll graph both of these both equations. So we have 30 is equal to 2 to the t, and I'll enter y1 is equal to 2 to the x, and I'll go y2 is equal to 30, and graph them both. Now, I'm not going to bring up the calculator, because we, we've done these ones often before. Your window settings will have to be sort of adjusted for, the, for this. In fact, let's go through a, an appropriate window setting. x, I'm going to keep pretty conventional. x is negative 1 for a minimum, 10 for a max, and, and 1 for a scale. If your window setting proves not to show you what you need to see, then you just change it. It's, it's nothing to get paralyzed over. You, if, if it doesn't work, you change it. The y, I'll go negative 5. I always like to have a minimum to be negative so I can see the axis. And I'm having a maximum of 40. You could go higher than that, but um, in fact, um, I think um, 
30 is as high as we really need to go because we want to just see how long it takes to get there. And I'm using a Y scale of 5. And if you graph these on your calculator like that, your graph will look a little bit different than mine simply because the scale is different. But you should have a line intersecting an exponential function. And any time you're trying to solve for the x va value to, to um, oops, this, is, this isn't 30, this is 30 up there, excuse me. Um, any time you're trying to find the y value, the x value for a certain y value, you have to use your intersect key. And you have to find this point right there where they two meet. So you've seen that before. Your intersect key is in your calculate menu. I'm not going to bring up the calculator though unless I have to. And then you should get that x is equal to 39 or 4 uh 4.9, excuse me. And that would mean that the bacteria population is 3000 after 4.9 hours. So you always have this. If you can't solve it algebraically, you can graph and use the intersection key when you need to find a specific x value for a given y value. So the next lesson will continue to be applications, but this time on exponential decay. Very similar to this. So thank you for your time.